Hey folks, I'm Mike Knoop, co-founder of uh, Zapier. For now, for those of you who aren't super familiar with Zapier, Zapier is used by about 10 million plus users all over the world. Most of our users are non-technical builders. Zapier is a no-code automation platform that folks can use to connect together all the various apps and apps, SaaS apps they use to orchestrate and automate different uh, workflows. We're perhaps better known for having the, I think, largest integration platform out there. We've got over 5,000 total apps uh, now on Zapier as well as I think close to 50,000 actions uh, across all of those uh, apps on Zapier. Uh, my journey with AI sort of started about uh, eight months ago, last summer. Um, I was actually running our product org for, uh, for the last several years, and I uh, read the React paper that came out last January, for those of you who are sort of uh, familiar with that, the reasoning and action paper around using this like observe thought loop for language models. And uh, we've been playing around with like GPT-2 and 3 internally, and that paper was the first one that really convinced me that like there's some emerging capabilities that these models have that like no one is currently building into products and like was the first thing i had saw that convinced me that like mm, maybe these language models are actually on the path towards some artificial general intelligence so i've been spending a lot of time just trying to like understand reasoning and tool use for language models over the last you know six seven eight months uh, myself along with my uh, co-founder brian and cto basically been diving uh, headfirst into this space basically um Kind of splitting our time between what do we build you know building ai first products and also our ai platform how do we bring these language models into a platform that other teams inside zapier can use and uh, this is actually a pattern i've seen a bunch of other companies adopt as well it seems like a, a fairly uh, good one one of the first things we started doing on that platform side is we started trying to bring on ai first partner apps on zapier we started to start see and get some of the early signals from our user base that they were starting to want these things so we added things like human loop a hugging face we uh, just did an inter integration with. We um, even had like an AI by Zapier wrapper app. And uh, over the like last six months, uh, certainly catalyzed by OpenAI and ChatGPT, um, you can see the graph and this is actually cut off at the end of the year. It's even more steep now. AI first apps is like a category on Zapier are growing faster than any other app on Zapier ever, including faster than Zoom during the pandemic, even growing faster than Slack during its initial hype wave. Um, and so we just saw this huge demand from our users that really wanted this stuff. And so uh, we sort of tried to focus and deliver that as best as quickly as we sort of could. One of the things we realized while doing this was, uh, you know, not just enough for us to sort of bring AI into Zapier, but there's an entire ecosystem. Everyone was adopting these like language model texts into their own products. And we realized we really need to be able to also bring Zapier's platform of tool use and actions into other products. And uh, that's what led us to this. The two weeks ago, Zapier was one of the launch partners for the ChatGPT plugins, which is leveraging some of the AI platform work that we built over the last uh, about three months and productionized into an API that uh, you can use inside of ChatGPT. Probably most of you have not gotten a chance to use this yet because they're still ramping up access. Uh, but one of the coolest things I think it does is, you know, sure you can tell it one off like, hey, do an action, do a thing, retrieve data, whatever. I think the coolest thing it does is it's like multi-step reasoning. So you can give it a one, like a zero shot, single sentence, something like, hey, I look up Wade at Zapier.com in my Notion database. If he doesn't exist, add him and automatically add a draft reply saying hello in my Gmail inbox. And the model can like reason through that sequence of, of, of steps and call Zapier's API in appropriate times to like do each of those, those steps in that sequence. Um, and I think this stuff is like what's really, really cool and unlock some of that like workflow capability that uh, I think Mike uh, was talking about earlier um, uh, in the presentation. This uh, ChatGPT plugin is powered by a brand new API. This is actually Zapier's first ever public API. <laughs> it's called the Natural Language API. Um, I'm a little sort of uh, sheepish or embarrassed to like say, <laughs> it's like literally a decade in and we're launching our first public API. Um, but one of the reasons we we hesitated for so long was because we didn't merely just want to pass along the sort of complexity of our ecosystem directly to end developers. We've certainly had people ask us like, hey, when are you gonna have an API? When are you gonna have an API? And being able to bring language models actually into the like build process of being able to deliver an API allowed us to sand off tons of the edge cases that we've had to solve over the last decade. We were able to kind of black box those all around. And it's sort of a very cheeky API. We're using a language model to make APIs more usable by other language models. Um, but it's a, it's a fun one. And uh, this is public. So this API is public. Any, it's live today. So anyone in this room can like go sign up and use this right now and start building Zapier's platform of, you know, 20,000 plus actions that are supported by the API directly into your own products. It's optimized specifically for um, language model based products. 
products that receive you know user input in sort of a natural language. But it's not strictly required. Uh, you can call the API in the old-fashioned way, just using a REST endpoint and statically defining everything yourself. Um, but we've really optimized it for, for natural language. And the way that it works is uh, you pass it, the only required input uh, on the API is an instruction string, a natural language, single sense instruction string. And uh, the API will translate that, decompose it down into the parameters that actually need to go across the wire out to, say, the SaaS server. So let's use Gmail as an example. Decompose the instruction into, hey, what's the Gmail2 address? What's the body? Uh, then we will sign the request, make the API call, get the response back, and then translate the response and summarize it into a human and uh, also coincidentally language model friendly format to return back through the API. We do something like cool stuff too, where we like guarantee, you know, the return is 350 tokens or less, so you can make it safe to insert right back into language model prompts. Like I said, there's a lot of optimization that went into the API to really make it easy for developers building sort of uh, AI first products, uh, AI first features to sort of plug in our ecosystem of actions directly into your uh, own products. Uh, this was a uh, project that, like I said, I think we had two people full-time working on, me and my co-founder. I thought it was really, really helpful to like really inject the founder DNA into this project. I think any other companies doing similar are probably smart to like try and put your like best founder DNA type of individuals on this stuff. Um, and uh, I think the total end-to-end -end took about four to six weeks from like zero to the ChatGPT plugin launch. So we're able to operate really, really quickly. And I think you know, many of others have mentioned, but I do, I do think speed is uh, probably one of the most important things, not necessarily from a competitive standpoint, but in order to like make contact with reality with this technology, because I don't think most people in this room even know all the emerging capabilities that's possible of. And the only way you really discover that is by seeing what your users actually try to do with it. And if you sit here waiting six months to figure out and do a big log research study, you've already sort of like lost six months of user impact and user input that you can use to like either train better models or guide the product evolution. Um, so that's uh, NLA in a nutshell, like I said, it's available right now. So you can go to this website, nla.zapper.com and I integrate it into your own products if you want to. And uh, you can shoot me an email or note if you have any questions. Thank you.